So my name is Daniel. I'm a founder of Moreland Shelters, a German-based social business. Um, I'm also representing on behalf of Kilian uh, Kleinschmidt, who cannot be here today. He's the senior camp coordinator at Satari Refugee Camp in Jordan. As we already heard yesterday uh, from Nick, there is today one billion people on this planet living in unhealthy, unstable and unsafe conditions. This very year we have 45 million people being refugees, settling in refugee camps or illegal and mostly, um, I, I mean in, in miserable and mostly illegal refugee camps and illegal settlements worldwide. And every eight minutes, one family is leaving home to find security, dignity, and hope. But they will hardly find it. So our axis is to turn the most miserable places on this planet into livable, sustainable, and innovative environment. Let me take you to a Satari refugee camp where I'm working with Kilian. It's just a few miles from the Syrian border and 100,000 people live in that area that could contain 1,000 football fields. $500,000 a day are needed to maintain the basic services, like for example, trucking in 3.5 billion liters, a million liters water a day. 50% of the inhabitants are children at the age under 18. In summer, we have temperatures up to 110 degrees in uh, winter, we encounter even snow. So refugee camps, as you can see here on the plan, are per definition temporary solutions. And that is how they are planned. So a huge logistical effort is put into place to bring tents, water, bread, and just deliver the basic services. And I think we all agree this is okay for a few weeks or even some months. But the actual statistics show and prove that the average lifespan of a refugee camp today is up to 20 years. And the average length of stay of a person is up to 12 years. So our mission is that we have to stop looking at those camps as a kind of temporary solution. We really have to transform them into a long-term set of opportunities for people who have lost everything. And the inhabitants, they already do, and that is great. Those people are taking every chance to improve their daily living conditions. They improve their shelters with whatever they find to adapt them to their family sizes or culturally known patterns. Shops are opened every day. In the camp, we find the fastest growing market in the Middle East today with a monthly turnover of $30 million. So, for example, 50,000 chicken are sold every month. It is crazy. This is the first bike store, which is a very good idea because the demand for transport of people and goods is very high. We see a robust rental market. This is a rent, rental shop for wedding dresses and suits. Food production is rising. Restaurants are opening. And here you see a man welding a container moving device out of what we call privatized fences and car wheels. <laughs> they also invent social and governance structures. So in total we see like a multi-layered urban life that is arising. So those people take the chance to go from survival to development and growth. And this is very good, but we have a huge problem because all of this is completely illegal. Refugees have always been seen as victims and a huge burden for poor host countries. So their legal status is forbidding every commercial activity or labor. The humanitarian relief sector has a tremendous, has its focus only on the tremendous logistical efforts and today's technical opportunities are not available on site. So we have to change that. Those people are not passive victims, they are active inventors. So let's invent with them. So if people know best what they need and the existing conditions are not adapted to what we need to bring, then we have to do something new. So in December 2013, 
The first ever multi-stakeholder design thinking and innovation workshop was held in the camp, co-hosted by the city of Amsterdam. With all humanitarian agencies, all the inhabitants, urban planners, international experts, and most important, with the local authorities. And we all agreed that we are willing to contribute, and we discussed and worked on the future of the camp and its relation with the region. We all agreed that the camp is not a simple thing. It's a complex organism, and we need to foster on multidimensional evolutions of the people in the camp. We need to focus on the opportunities for all parties. We then elaborated the first grid of linked solutions on all major topics like water, telecom, housing, education, commerce, food, transportation, electricity. So I will show you some examples. Um, so the sewage system implemented by the United Nation, Nations became useless because people were just transferring the, the, the urban planning permanently. So the consequence that you can see here is that black water is either penetrating the soil uncontrolled, or it has to be extracted and transported far away at high costs. So this is one example of you know, very temporary thinking that is not sustainable. So why don't we look at sewage as a resource? We could use it as a fertilizer, for example, for urban farming projects. So let's find a smart and simple technical solution to process it within the camp and connect this method with the regional wastewater management system, create micro business, uh, businesses around that, make joint ventures between Jordanians and Syrians, and scale it up within the region. Here you see the container moving device in action. Um, and that is, of course, something good, but it's also a problem. As inhabitants create new settlements pattern constantly, we have no idea about the further development of the camp. So the solution was that we GPS tracked every single container to get a real-time flexible urban planning information and learn from that informal spatial setup more about the social dynamics to understand the organism camp better and to, to provide better services. So we could bring schools where they are really needed. Um, we can define commercial zones, etc. Third, we only have uncertain quantity and unknown quality information about the refugee community. We have no precise information about the skills and the level of education of the inhabitants. So we installed a precise biometric-based ID system containing all relevant information. And that fosters the quality-based participation that we are implementing and creates business networks also within the region and develops adapted on-site vocational training. So we even thought a bit more visionary about this thing. Why don't we install a permanent fab lab or a makerspace? Why don't we use rapid prototyping, like 3D printing, or Astro was suggesting even solar sintering to produce shelters on-site with local resources, enhance the flexibility of the design to produce the shelter accordingly to family sizes or cultural expectations. Why don't we find re- or upcycling waste to energy systems? We have to implant solar and wind energy and adapt those technologies to the local context. We can raise connectivity through the camp, through a network of hotspots and SIM cards, and then bring a mobile, uh, mobile payment system. So let us leverage emerging technology and ecosystem collaboration to evolve many th sectors involved in the camp. For that, we are building an innovation and bridging agency on site with a small agile team of three holistic planners. That is the little uh, blue dot on the bottom. Um, and they are leading and facilitating a permanent innovation process in the camp. So it is a dialogue-based creative engine to deliver multi-layered solutions and a driver for growth and opportunities. So we have to combine that with the best of social, technology, uh, technical, and economic innovation that we can find worldwide to implant short, medium, and long-term solutions and to shift legal structures and regulations. So the city of Amsterdam already agreed and provides integrated urban planning 
the Dutch government is supporting a long-term regional development plan through VNG. The BMW Foundation connected its Young Global Leaders Network to the project. The VTOL Foundation is co-financing us. So we already found many, many partners, governments, the social design department of the Academy of Fine Arts in Hamburg, the MIT, Harvard, they are all committed. So our next step is then to implant this docking station permanently and to build more active of those holistic pilots to bridge local inhabitants with resources and partners from all over the world to connect Satari and the region to the opportunity of the 21st century. In that setting, we will learn, adapt, and invent every day. The plan is to change Satari and then move beyond to leverage our docking station approaches for collaborative innovation on challenges and opportunities in other vulnerable communities worldwide. Thank you very much.